What's up everybody? Welcome back to uh, Father Son Rebuilds. Uh, my name is Jaime Senior. Uh, my son is not with me at this point, but uh, I'm recording this for myself, so we'll do without. Um, if, if you recall, we're in the middle of a uh, 2003 Mini Cooper S rebuild. Uh, we spun uh, rod bearing number three. And uh, man, it's been quite an adventure just to get to this point due to COVID. I mean, it's just, everything's on back order or extremely, extremely expensive. And I'm not you know, I'm not gonna pay $400 for uh, main bearings. It's just not what I'm trying to do. If you see our first video, this is a budget build, uh, but we need to do things right uh, because in all this hard work and money and time is just gonna go down the drain. If this right here, the crank, you know, if the backbone of the engine, if it's not right, nothing else will, will survive. Eventually things will break down. So that being said, uh, this crank, uh, uh, like I said, spun uh, rod bearing number three. Uh, it is welded, balanced, uh, chamfered, uh, ground and polished to the nines, right? Now, the problem that I'm having or that I've been having is that the main bearings are only available at this point from the dealer. The deciding is uh, grinding down the mains 10,000 so then I have the uh, aftermarket available. Uh, excuse me for one second. It was is once I got the crank back, uh, you know, I just um, uh, I started to okay. What I do? What, what do I need to do? What, what's the process next? And besides getting uh, brand new bolts uh, from the dealer, you know, this is 120 bucks worth already because they are torque to yield uh, according to the Haynes manual. But uh, you know, it's it's been you know quite an adventure. But uh, what we're doing now is. I was just checking a check out of round and thought obviously there's, there's specifications for that and also axial play so out of round and axial play so um, what I ended up doing is once I got the crank back a couple days ago I started assembling it which which, which is the timing gear and the uh, crank position sensor uh, uh, sprocket also was off um, what I ended up doing with the timing gear was I, I you know my like, man you know I have a press but it was just, it was blocked off and my, you know, my dad, he has it a certain way where I couldn't get to it. And it was just, you know what, I'll, I'll just get an oversized pipe and I'll gently tap it in. Well, it's not that gentle. You really got to give it a couple wax. And that's what I ended up doing. And I put it on the floor and you know, I hit it once, I hit it twice and it started moving, but it, I'm like, oh my God, what am I doing? I just spent almost 200 bucks getting this crank perfect and I'm beating it. I'm like, oh no way! So I immediately stopped, and I put it on the cranky like as you see it now. And I took a reading of of, of the out of round, and uh, thank goodness, you know, after checking it before and after. what my crank guy ended up doing I went back to him and he he actually just did exactly what I did it was he put it on the floor he got an oversized pipe boom 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 four five six hits later it's it seated I'm like oh my god in my head I'm like oh my god what is this guy doing um, and, and I wasn't gonna stop him I wasn't gonna question him this this guy has you know two decades of, of crank uh, and machining experience I'm not gonna I was just gonna let him do it and then like in my because because the crank is, is it's not linear it's offset you know the, the mains are linear but the rod bearings and the journals are off so it's like a sandwich you know so in my head I'm like oh my god it's bent because it was bent you know the first time when I took it to the, to the machine shop it was bent. it was ten thousands off and I have a video of that as well um, so he ended up just beating it in just like I was doing and and but I really originally wanted to press it in but I was just I don't know why I didn't you know wait you know another day but I just was excited to get the bearings and I just want to get this thing going man because it's been a long time and it's been an ar arduous task just to even get these bearings but we got them uh, here's a crank so I you know like I said I checked it when I beat it and it was a foul it would barely do a thousand so and I'm checking it right now and it's the same thank God so everything looks good I'm super happy I just love 
brand name. And speaking of brand name, uh, we got matching king variants, mains and rods, and then uh, bottom end and top end kit will be molly as well because my pistons are molly. So very excited. So let's get to it. straight edge to just make sure they're 100% flat, parallel to the block. Things are very well packed. I'm impressed. Ooh, wow. Sorry, This thing is gorgeous. Look at this thing. You guys can see that. I'm so happy. There we go. Okay, plastic gauge time. Now I'm pretty confident that this crank is in ideal shape. Um, I should be using red, but we can always convert. The red one is thicker, so hopefully I don't get killed in the comments. But. I just want to make sure that the readings are the same across, regardless of whatever they are. I want them to be the same. So the green measures uh, between the point, so 10 thousandths, uh, so 0 0.05, 0 0.025 millimeters to 0.76 millimeters, which ironically is, is the opposite of the uh, end plate. So let me just show you guys. Yeah, this is right there. So let's put the top half down or the bottom half down and see. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut right there. Uh, I'm going to uh, fasten all the old bolts, and that actually brings me to my next uh, uh, portion of the video. It's always been a question of mine: of okay, so how do you test uh, oil clearance, right? So if you're going to use plastic gauge and need these bolts, and this there are no ARP variants, so I have or I may be wrong. So do I use the old bolts or do I use the new bolt? Because if I use the new bolts, then technically, if I tighten this down, I won't be able to reuse them, right? 
to check the, the oil clearance. But if I use the old bolts, the, the torque measurements may be incorrect because they're old. They've already been stretched. So, man, I am confused up to here. Some people say you can reuse them. Some people say you can't reuse them. The book says you can't, but to check oil clearance, I don't know. But the book does state for checking rod clearance, uh, your clearance before you're, or you're on your rod journals and your uh, big end side, you can reuse, or it tells you to reuse the old ones. So I'm gonna use the old ones, so stick with me, sorry. All right guys, here we go. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and torque these um, old bolts. Uh, the inner inner 10 to 44 foot pounds is the book calls for. I'm gonna do 45, I'm feeling lucky, because they're already stretched. Just like Mini, right? I'm feeling lucky. Uh, our 10, uh, it's uh, 26 foot pounds, so I'll, I'll do 27, so here we go. And there's there's obviously a pattern. Um, it's crisscross pattern, you start from the in inside and you work your way out. All right guys, well, it's been a long day. Um, I hope you guys kind of enjoyed this and maybe learned something. Uh, I'm sure I've made mistakes with numbers and verbiage, uh, but it looks like the crank is perfectly fine. Oil clearances are good. Uh, play is fine, especially with new bearings. I think we're good. I'm gonna sh get one shot of the top of the crank at the mains. And that's pretty much it. Next video, we'll actually start putting the bottom end together. Less talking, more doing. Thank you. I'll see you on the next one.